Hey YouTubers, what's up? It's been a little over a year since I posted my last uh, video. It was uh, labeled uh, Tricked Out Ice Fish and Sled for Six Bucks. Well, I've taken and made some changes to my sled. You know, when you get out on the ice and you start fumbling around with things that you really didn't think through and, well, I've had a whole year to think things through. Actually, I just started making some changes on it about a week or two ago. Anyway, uh, I'll run you through this. I'll try to keep this a short video, and I don't like to watch long videos myself. So anyway, here we go. Uh, this is the Ion 40 volt battery powered auger. That's going to definitely help out a lot. I have it strapped to my sled. I got the bungee screwed on this side so I don't lose it. And I've got it hooked down here on the other side. So we just unhook that. Unpeel the bungee cord off in there. Remove the auger. Uh, first video I made, I had had my uh, tray of goodies up in here. But I found myself getting a little cold out there, so I did some modifications with that as well. So I ended up putting some sternals in here. I tried the wick one. As you can see, the wick got a little crazy and it started a fire in my sled. But all is well, still in contact and good shape. There's a sternal down in here. Pop the lid off from that. Put a hook here so I can hang my can opener. And a little pair of these to pull the hooks out of the mouths that get stuck. I'm trying to hold the camera, I'm fumbling around. Anyway, I'm gonna grab a lighter a second. This is what it looks like from up here. Light the, light the sternal. Close the big door. And when your hands get cold, you can open up this little door. I don't know if you can see that, but the flame is roaring in there. You know, put your hands over the hole here and heat up. I have this little uh, turn knob here. If I want to just let a little bit of heat out, I can turn the turn knob in ever so slightly and that holds the door open or I can turn it even farther and it really holds the door open so I can let this heat out. And I can even lean over it and get a little bit of warm warmth off from it. Anyway, enough on the heater. Drop the lid on that and put it out. Got me a can in here for my butts because I do smoke. Fill up screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. Anyway, that used to be the compartment with my tray of goodies in it, but I wanted heat, so I made it a heating compartment. And I'm just how you close it and lock it into place. It stays loose like this until I turn this knob over it so that secures it into place. On the front here, I moved this thing down. That's to my rope. And so my rope isn't just sitting in the slush and getting all hard nicky on me. I rechanged, or I, I redid my transducer holder. I used some PVC pipe I had laying around. Cut it out, slide it out for the cord to go through. Put a string in it so I don't lose it. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to make another one. It's not like it was that costly, but I don't want to make another one. There's where my transducer goes. There's the stop nail. It's hooked up to the sled. Uh, transducer, I got the hook here so you can lower it in the water and set your depth to it. 
and that's how easy that works. I am not gonna drag my transducer off. I found with my last uh, holder, I'd be rocking along and I look back a couple of times and there my transducer is dragging under my sled. That, that could be a costly uh, mistake, so I had to redo this. As you can see, my Vexlar is still on the front. I had to add some wiring to it. Uh, I didn't like the idea of having to bring my Vexlar over to the to an outlet to to charge my ba battery. Uh, so I did some modifications on that as well, and on my charging thing, so I can just take the battery out and bring it to a countertop and charge it up. Uh, let's see what else. I got my rod holder here. This is for when you want to put your rod down and you don't want to have to hang on to it. And you can put your rod on here. And as you can see here, my sensitive tip is in line with my Vexlar. So I don't have to look away from it. I don't have to look down at my rod and look back at the Vexlar, nothing like that. It is in line with my Vexlar unit. So you can, uh, you can get a little glare off in there, but this is where I'm sitting. This is a natural view of it. I can see where the fish are, the markings, and the and the and the bites on the sensitive tip there. I really like that. So I don't have to look in two places at once. I can just look at one place. And in fact, when it starts getting dark out and you can't see the, your uh, the tip of your rod anymore. The Vexlar lights it up so you can actually see the tip of your, your rod as you're looking at the Vexlar when it starts getting dark out. So you're not getting lost wondering if you're getting bites or not. You can still, you can see it after dark because the Vexlar illuminates the tip of the ice rod. So I cover that, put the rod away. Walmart recently had uh, some uh, stuff on sale. I found this. Uh, slush scoop it extends up to three feet long I think I paid like geez I don't know it was really cheap I can't remember I think it was like three bucks for it but you can twist here and extend it to three feet I don't have to reach over anymore with my little scoop I used to have now I can just sit up straight dig down in the hole scoop that stuff out I also made a holder for it so I don't have to dig it out or leave it behind or anything so it goes on the side of my sled, it gets clipped here and here, and then I just turn the head in so it's not in the way. I installed foot pegs so I have somewhere to put my feet so I'm not uh, sitting bow-legged on this thing because it, to reach the ground, I'd have to extend from here all the way to the ground. and. It was like sitting on a bowl after a while, a big wide bowl, and I didn't like that. Not to mention the fact that my feet would be on the ice and they'd get cold. So now my feet will be suspended off from the ice and onto these foot pegs. I picked these up at Menards. Uh, I can't remember. I think they were like three bucks a piece or something like that, maybe less than that. But they make excellent ice uh, foot pegs, and they're, they're really strong steel. So that's my uh, ice scoop. I put my rods in the back. I didn't like them in the front because they seemed to get in the way. So now they're dangling off the back. I, put them, I ran them on an angle so I'm not leaning on to my ice fishing rod. So I got one on this side, one on the other side. Uh, this is just my bungee. You've seen this already that holds my uh, auger onto my sled. So I don't, I don't have to stop and pick that up. I made a new seat cushion and obviously I had to move it back for comfort reasons and to be able to get into things without having to uh, do a lot of messing around. So that's my uh, seat here. I got a ruler on the front here. You see my double door here, I showed you this already. Got the big door that opens up to get to the inside here. The smaller door is just so you can warm up your hands and then gotta open up the big thing. And it helps hold the heat down and you don't get all that cold air mixed in with it. So under here, this is a slide knob. That slide knob locks this side down. I don't have to open, I don't have to slide it over to open up the seat. So under the seat, 
is a compartment where I keep all my goodies. I get a lot of homemade jigs in here. Uh, I like to put my wax worms in here. It's a lot easier to deal with than them, them blow away things that you normally get wax worms in. It's a, a little tiny bottle of food coloring. If I get holes that are hitting well, I usually mark them with a couple of dots of food coloring so I know which holes to return to. Lighter to keep things lit, like my cigarettes and my and my sternals. Go with the, the gel sternals. They don't burn as long, but they burn a lot cleaner and safer. Just a couple of tools in here. Uh, I can remove that. I have a pair of gloves in here. I bought a pair of mittens today at Menards, five bucks. I like mittens over gloves because gloves, each finger is uh, individual, so they get cold. Mittens, all your fingers are together, so you get the warmth of all your fingers in mittens instead of individual fingers, as in gloves. I keep a towel in here to keep my hands dry. Wet hands or cold hands. Anybody who ice fishes knows that. Once in a while when it gets really cold out, it's just a dust mask, a, a heavier dutier one. But it actually uh, keeps my face warm when you're huffing and puffing out on the ice and moving around. And you wear one of these, uh, it, it helps keep your, 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 your face warm and your breathing isn't so, your throat doesn't get all frostbit, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see, you keep an extra sternal down in here. Got a pair of sunglasses on the side on a hook. That's for when the sun is really shining brightly onto the snow and it gets, gets a little intense. A couple packages of hand warmers down in there. Two sets of ice cleats. I picked up ice cleats at Walmart at their sale for 99 cents a pair. Now they're not the best, but it's either cleats or no cleats and for 99 cents. I use these all the time and I think they work rather well. This is my battery box. It used to be in the front compartment. I relocated it to the back compartment. Uh, there's my battery in there. These are just uh, Menard bags. They're heavy duty. So when you catch all your fish, you got something to put your fish in that, that's not going to rip out like a cheaper bag. Like. So I do like to keep extra bags in there as well. Uh, so I think I got that all covered. Put this stuff back in there. What's really nice is my first video was the tricked out ice sled for six bucks. It's the same sled, just new modifications on it. Like I said before, last thing you want to do when you're out on the ice and it's cold out is be fumbling around because when your fingers get cold, it's really hard to, uh, to uh, really handle things. So I think I got this one set up pretty darn good. I think uh, this is the best way to go. I'll give you a good shot of it from the side. And I don't know if I can get back far enough, but there it is. This is the only way to go. I've got everything in there. No carrying buckets or this or that. Even when I get done catching my fish, I can put them in the bag. Move a couple things over and just drop my bag of fish down into my compartments. So when I'm leaving, when I'm done fishing, sun's going down, it's really getting cold out. You want to get to that vehicle and start warming it up so you can thaw out. Uh, I don't have to carry anything. All I have to do is drag my sled back to my vehicle, load it up, and go home. Anyway... I hope you guys enjoy the video. Sorry if it got a little lengthy, but I had to put everything in here and let you know what's going on. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, some of you guys uh, checked out my first video. Forgive me if I forget your names. I get a few that hits on it and compliment me on my sled. Well, this is the updated version of it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Get out there and do some fishing. I know I'm going to. I'm here in Michigan. It's actually 37 degrees out right now. It's raining. But that's good because it's going to melt the, the, the two or three inches of snow that was on top of the thin ice. It's going to melt that snow and it's going to drop back down into the teens again. So I'm ready. I'm ready 